All right, all right, all right. So what happened in the last one? Last chapters, guys. All right. If Listen, if you didn't catch up on anything and you would like to, exclamation point react in the chat if you guys don't want to go watch the videos. If not, I'm just going to give you a kind of brief recap. So last two chapters, um, there was a festival and it was called the Fire Night, I think, or something. Fire, right fire fire or something anyway it was like a festival and basically what happens during the festival is that the high fae usually kind of suck up all of the magic um kalamai kalamai yeah and um the high fae suck up all the magic from the ground from the earth and kind of go ballistic you know kind of get like basically drugged on magic and then basically sleeps with hot women or whichever women want to um and it's just kind of like a way for them to uh i guess balance the world um and the, and the seasons so um that happened and during that um the high fey aka tomlin was like yo Feyre." You sit your ass home, all right? Don't you move because Tomlin's going to go feral because he has all that magic in him, you know, and he can't control it. And Feyre was like, nah, I'm okay. I'm going to go out and see what it's about. So he goes out. So, sorry, she goes out and wanted to see, you know, what all the commotion was, all the drums and stuff. And while adventuring ran into some other people some other fairies who stopped her and was like oh my god human woman oh my god wow i'm so lucky you're so hot blah 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 and it was like three of them and she was scared and then came in some other uh high fae i believe um and apparently he was one of the most good looking people ever and uh yeah and saved her and she said that he was like super bad news though and dangerous but also very attractive and i think he had like brown or he had like short black hair i think very attractive and um yeah apparently was the the most handsome person she has ever seen and anyways so she got out of that and then got back home and as she was home that night tomlin comes back from the ritual after get, getting done you know being a slut and then saw Feyre and was like Feyre, i told you to sit inside your room why are you walking around looking you know walking around looking hot and stuff and then tomlin tried to make a move and um, started kissing up on Feyre's neck and whatnot. And then Feyre kind of just like, you know, was like, all right, whatever. Pushed him aside a little and was like, yeah, I don't know. Kind of just like teasing him a little bit and then went back to bed and then they kind of slept on it. And yeah, so she slapped him. She, she literally slapped him because... She was like, yo, you just got done being a slut and now you want to be with me, you know? Um, and then, yeah. But the next day, it was, uh, it was very like, there was a lot of tension still. Yeah, he bit her. Yeah, that's true. There's, a, there's still a lot of tension between them. There's a lot of tension between them. And we really left off Let's see. Let me read the last little bit. Let's see what happens. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So she showed him, she showed Tomlin her art. And upon showing Tomlin her art, uh, there was a lot of like cool ones that she liked. Or he, he specifically liked the one of her old cottage area with the winter and the snow and it, how gray it seemed. Um, and 
Um, and then also Tomlin saw uh, a painting of Isaac, a.k.a. Farah's old little fling. And yeah, and he was a little jealous, a little jealous of that. So yeah, and it ends like this. Um, what well, what it was like, what it is like for me to care for my people, my lands, what scars are still there, what the bad days feel like. That wrathful jealousy faded away like morning dew as you smiled at my painting. This reminds me of it, of what I breathed. He lowered the painting, looking right at me, right into me, that I'm not alone. He's talking about the winter painting of the old cottage. I didn't lock my bedroom door that night, and that's where it ended. That's where it ended. So, chapter 23. Let's get into it. The next afternoon, I lay on my back in the grass, savoring the warmth of the sunshine filtering through the canopy leaves, noting how I might incorporate it into my next painting. Lucian, claiming that he had mis miserable emissary business to attend to, had left Tomlin and me to our own devices, and the High Lord had taken me to yet another beautiful spot of his enchanted forest. But there was no enchantments here, no pools of starlight, no rainbow waterfalls. It was just a grassy glen watched over by a weeping willow with a clear brook running through it. He lounged in comfortable silence, and I glanced at Tomlin, who dozed behind, beside me, his golden hair and mask glistening bright against the emerald carpet. carpet. The delicate arch of this pointed ears made me pause. He opened an eye and smiled lazily at me. That willow singing always put me to sleep. The what of what? I said, popping myself on my elbows to stare at the th trees above us. Tomlin pointed towards the willow. The branches sighed as they moved in the breeze. It sings. I suppose it sings war champ uh, limericks too. He smiled and half sat up, twisting the look to look at me. You're human, he said, and I rolled my eyes. Your senses are still sealed off from everything. I made a face. Just another of my many shortcomings. But she, but the word shortcomings had somehow stopped finding its mark. He plucked a strand of grass from my hair. Heat radiated from my face as his fingers grazed my cheek. I can, maybe, I can make you able to see it, he said. His fingers lingered at the end of the braid, twirling the curl of hair around. See my world. Hear it smell it my breathing became shallow and as he sat up taste it his eyes flicked to the fading bruise on my neck how i asked heat blooming as he crashed before me every gift comes with a price i frowned and he grinned a kiss absolutely not my blood raced and i had to clench my hands in the grass to keep from touching him don't you think it puts me at a disadvantage to not be able to see all this I'm one of the high fae. We don't give anything without gaining something for, from it. To my own surprise, I said, fine. He blinked, probably expecting me to have fought a little harder. I hid my smile and sat up so that I faced them, our knees touching as we knelt in the grass. I licked my lips, my heart fluttering so quickly it felt as if I had a hummingbird inside my chest. Close your eyes, he said, and I obeyed, my fingers grappling onto the grass. The birds chattered and the willow branches sighed. The grass crunched as Tomlin rose up to his knees. I braced myself at the brush of his mouth on one of the eyelids, then on the other. He pulled away, and I was left breathless, the kisses still lingering on my skin. The singing of birds became an orchestra, a symphony, a symphony of gossip and mirth. I never heard so many layers of music. Never heard the variation and themes that wove between their uh, arpeggios. And beyond the bird song, there was an ethereal melody, a woman, uh, melancholy and weary, the willow, gasping. I opened my eyes. The world had become richer, clearer. The brook was a near invisible rainbow of water that flowed over stones and an invitingly smooth as silk. The trees were clothed in a faint shimmer that radiated from their centers and danced along the edges of their leaves. There was no tangy metallic stench. No, the smell of magic had become like jasmine, like lilac, like roses. I would never be able to paint it, the richness, the feel, maybe fractions of it, but not the whole thing. Magic, 
everything was magic and it broke my heart. I looked at Tomlin and my heart cracked entirely. It was Tomlin, but not. Rather, it was Tomlin I'd dreamed of. His skin gleaming with a golden sheen and around his head glowed a cir uh, cir circlet, circlet of sunshine and his eyes not merely green and gold, but every hue and variation that could be imagined. As though every leaf in the forest had bled onto one shade, this was a High Lord of Prithian, devastatingly handsome, captivating, powerful beyond belief. My breath caught in my throat as I touched the contours of his mask. The cool metal bit into my fingertips, and the emerald slipped against my callous skin. I lifted my other hand and gently grasped either side of the mask. I pulled lightly. It wouldn't move. He began smiling as I pulled again, and I blinked, dropping my hands. Instantly, the golden, glowing Tomlin vanished, and the one I knew returned. I could still hear singing of the willow of the birds, but why can't I see it anymore? Because I willed my glamour back into place. Glamour for what? To look normal, or as normal as I can look with this damn thing, he added, gesturing to the mask. Being a High Lord, even one with limited powers, comes with physical markers, too. It's why I couldn't hide what I was becoming from my brothers, from anyone. It's still easier to blend in. But the mask truly can't come off. I mean, are you sure there's no one who knows how to fix what the magic did that night? Even someone in another court? I don't know why the mask bothered me so greatly. I didn't see his entire face. I didn't need to see his entire face to know him. I'm sorry to disappoint you. I just, just want to know what you look like. I wondered when I'd grown so shallow. What do you think I look like? I tilted my head to the side. A strong, straight nose, I said, drawing from what I'd once tried to paint. High cheekbones that bring out your eyes. Slightly, slightly arched brows. I finished blushing. He was grinning so broadly that I could almost see all of his teeth. Those fangs nowhere in sight. I tried to think up an excuse for my forwardness, but a yawn crept from me as a sudden weight pressed on my eyes. What about your part of the bargain? What? He leaned closer, his smile turning wicked. What about my kiss? I grabbed his fingers. Here, I said, and slammed my mouth against the back of his hand. There's your kiss. <laughs> Tomlin roared with laughter, but the world blurred, lulling me to sleep. The willow beckoned me to lie down, and I obliged. From far off, I heard Tomlin curse. Feyre? Sleep. I wanted sleep, and there was no better place to sleep than right here. Listening to the willow and the birds and the brook, I curled on my side, using my arm for a pillow. I should bring you home, he murmured, but he didn't move to drag me to my feet. Instead, I felt a slight thud in the earth, and the spring rain and new grass scent of him cloyed in my nose as he lay beside me. I tingled with pleasure as he stroked my hair. This was such a lovely dream. I never slept so wonderful before. So warm, nestled beside him, calm, faintly echoing into my world of slumber. He spoke again, his breath caressing my ear. You're exactly as I dreamed you to be, too. Darkness swallowed everything. Chapter 24 Chapter, tw do we keep going? That was quick, yeah. That was a quick one. All right, all right. We go. It wasn't the dawn that awoke me, but rather a buzzing noise. I groaned as I sat up in bed and squinted at the squat woman with skin made from tree bark who fussed with my breakfast dishes. Where's Alice? I asked, rubbing the sleep from my eyes. Tomlin must have carried me up here. Must have carried me the whole way home. What? She turned towards me. Her bird mask was familiar, but I would have remembered a fairy with skin like that. Would have painted it already. Is Alice unwell? I said, sliding from my bed. This was my room, wasn't it? A quick glance told me yes. Are you out of your right mind? The fairy said. I bit my lip. I am, Alice. She, ch she clucked. And with a shake of her head, she strode into the bathing room to start my bath. It was impossible. The Alice I knew was fair and plump and looked like a high fae. I rubbed my eyes with my thumb and forefinger. A glamour. That's what Tomlin had said he wore. 
his fairy sight had stripped away the glamours I've been seeing, but why bother to glamour everything? Because I've been a cowering human, that's why? Because Tomlin knew I would have locked myself in this room and never come out if I'd seen them all for their true selves. Things only got worse when I made my way downstairs to find the High Lord. The hallways were bustling with masked fairies I'd never seen before. Some were tall and humanoid, high fey like Tom Tomlin. Others were not fairies. I tried to avoid looking at those ones as they seemed the most surprised to notice my attention. I was almost shaking by the time I reached the dining room. Lucian, mercifully, appeared like Lucian. I didn't ask whether that was because Tomlin had informed me to put up a better glamour or because he didn't bother trying to be something he wasn't. Tomlin lounged in his usual chair, but straightened as I lingered in the doorway. What's wrong? There are a lot of people, fairies, around. When do they arrive? I almost yelled when I looked out my bedroom window and spotted all the fairies in the garden. Many of them, all with insect masks, pruned the hedges and tended the flowers. Those fairies had been the stran strangest of all, with their iridescent, buzzing wings sprouting from their backs, and of course, then there were their green and brown skin and their unnaturally long limbs, and Tomlin bit his lip, as if to keep me for, keep from smiling. They've been here all along. But, but I didn't hear anything. Of course you didn't, Lucian. Of course you didn't, Lucian drawled and twirled one of his daggers between his hands. We made sure you couldn't see or hear anyone, but those who were necessary. I adjusted the levels of my tunic. So you mean that, that when I ran after the puka that night, you had an audience, Lucian finished for me. I thought I'd been so stealthy. <laughs> Meanwhile, I've been tiptoeing past fairies who had probably laughing their heads off at the blind human following an illusion. Fighting against my rising mortification, I turned to Tomlin. His lips twitched and he clamped them tightly together, but the amusement still danced in his eyes as he nodded. It was a valiant effort. But I could see the naga and the puka and the cereal and, and that fairy, those wings were ripped off, I said, wincing inwardly. Why didn't the glamour apply to them? His eyes darkened. They're not members of my court, Tomlin said, so my glamour didn't keep a hold on them. The puka belongs to the wind and weather and everything that changes, and the naga, they belong to someone else. I see, I lied, not quite seeing it all. Lucian chuckled, sensing it, and I glared sidelong at him. You've been noticeably absent again. He used the dagger to clean his nails. I've been busy. So have you, I take it. What's that supposed to mean? I demanded. If I offer you the moon on a string, will you give me a kiss too? Don't be an ass, Tomlin said to him with a soft snarl. But Lucian continued laughing and was still laughing when he left the room. Alone with Tomlin, I shifted on my feet. So if I were to encounter the Atwar again, I said, mostly to avoid the heavy silence, would I actually see it? Yes, and it wouldn't be pleasant. You said it didn't see me that time, and it certainly doesn't seem like a member of your court, I ventured. Why? Because I threw a glamour over you when we entered the garden, he said simply. The Atwar couldn't see, hear, or smell you. His gaze went to the window beyond me, and he ran a hand through his hair. I've done what I can to keep you invisible to creatures like the Atsor, and worse, the blight is acting up again. The more of these creatures are being freed from their tethers. My stomach turned over. If you spot one, Tomlin continued, even if it looks harmless but makes you feel uncomfortable, pretend you don't see it. Don't talk to it. If it hurts you, I, the results wouldn't be pleasant for it or for me. You remember what happened with the Naga. That was for my own safety, not his amusement. He didn't want me hurt. He didn't want to punish them for hurting me. Even if the Naga hadn't been part of his court, had it hurt him to kill them? Realizing he waited for my answer, I nodded. The, the blight is growing again? So far, only in the territories. You're safe here. It's not my safety I'm worried about. Tomlin's eyes softened, but his lips became a thin line as he said. It'll be fun. Is it possible that the surge will be temporary? Fool's hope. Tomlin didn't reply, which was an answer enough. If the blight was becoming active again, I didn't bother to offer my aid. I already knew he wouldn't allow me to help with the whatever his conflict was, but I thought of that painting I'd given him and what he said about it. He wished he would let me in anyway. The next morning, I found a head in the garden, a bleeding male high fey head, spiked atop a fountain statue of a great heron flapping its wings. The stone was soaked in enough blood to suggest that the head had been fresh when someone had impaled it on the heron's upraised bill. 
I had been hauling my paints and easel out to the garden to paint one of the beds of ir ir irises when I stumbled across it. My tins and brushes had clattered to the gravel. I didn't know where I went as I stared at that still screaming head, the brown eyes bulging, the teeth broken and bloody. No mask, so he wasn't part of the spring court. Anything else about him, I couldn't discern. His blood was so bright on the gray stone, his mouth opened so vulgar vulgarly. I backed away a step and slammed into something warm and hard. I whirled, hands rising out of instinct, but Tama's voice said, It's me, and I stopped cold. Lucian stood beside me, pale and grim. Not Autumn Court, uh, Lucian said. I don't recognize him at all. Thomas' hand clamped on my shoulders as I turned back towards the head. Neither do I. A soft, vicious growl laced his words, but no claws pricked my skin as he kept gripping me. His hands tightened, though, while Lucian stepped into the small pool in which the statue stood, striding through the red water until he peered up at the anguished face. They branded him behind the ear with a sigil, Lucian said, swearing. A mountain with three stars. Night court, Thomas said quietly. The night court, the northernmost bit of Prithian. If I recalled the mural's map correctly, a land of darkness and starlight. Why? Why would they do this? I breathed. Tama let go, coming to stand at my side as Lucian climbed the statue to remove the head. I looked towards a blossoming crab apple tree instead. The night court does what it wants, Tama said. They live by their own codes, their own corrupt morals. They're all sadistic killers. Lucian said. I dared to glance at him. He was now perched on the Huron's stone wing. I looked away again. They delight in torture of every kind and would find this sort of stunt to be amusing. Amusing, but not a message. I scanned the garden. Oh, it's a message, Lucian said, and I cringed at the thick, wet sounds of flesh and bone on stone as he yanked the head off. I'd skinned enough animals, but this, Tomlin put another hand on my shoulder to get in and out of our defenses to possibly commit the crime nearby with the blood this fresh. A splash as Lucian landed in the water again. It's exactly what the High Lord of the Night Court would find amusing, the bastard. I gouged uh, the distance between the pool and the house, 60, maybe 70 feet. That's how close they come to us. Tomlin brushed a thumb against my shoulder. You're still safe. This was just their idea of a prank. This isn't connected to the blight, I asked. Only in that they know the blight is again weaken, awakening and wants us to know that they're circling the spring court like vultures should our wards fall further. I must have looked as sick as I felt because Tomlin added, I won't let that happen. I didn't have the heart to say that their masks made it fairly clear that nothing could be done against the blight. Lucian splashed out of the fountain, but I couldn't look at him. Not with the head he bore, the blood surely on his hands and clothes. We'll get what's coming to them soon enough. Hopefully the blight will wreck them too. Tomlin growled at Lucian to take care of the head and the gravel crunched as Lucian departed. I crouched to pick up my paints and brushes, my hands shaking as I fumbled for a large brush. Tomlin knelt next to me, but his hands closed around mine, squeezing. You're still safe, he said again. The serial's command echoed through my mind. Stay with the High Lord, human. You will be safe. I nodded. It's court posturing, he said. The night court is deadly, but this was the only their lord's idea of a joke attacking anyone here attacking you would cause more trouble than it's worth for him the blight truly does harm these lands and the night court enters our borders we'll be ready my knees shook as i rose fairy politics fairy courts their idea of jokes must have been even more horrific when we were enslaved to you all they must have tortured us whenever they liked must have done such unspeakable awful things to their human pets a shadow flickered in his eyes. Some days, I'm very glad I'm still a child when my father sent his slave south of the wall. When I witnessed this was bad enough. I didn't want to imagine, even now. I still hadn't looked to see if any hints of those long-ago humans had been left behind. I did not think five centuries would be enough to cleanse the stain of the horrors that my people had endured. I should have let it go. I should. I should have, but couldn't. Do you remember if they were happy to leave? Tomlin shrugged. Yes, yet they never known freedom or known the seasons as you do. They didn't know what to do in the mortal world, but yes, most of them were very, very happy to leave. Each word was more ground out than the next. I was happy to see them go, even if my father wasn't. Despite the stillness with which he stood, his claws poked out from above his knuckles. 
No wonder he had been awkward with me. Had no idea what to do with me when I first arrived, but I said quietly, you're not your father, Tomlin, or your brothers. He glanced away and I added, you never made me feel like a prisoner, never made me feel a little more than chattel. The shadows that flickered in his eyes as he nodded his thanks to told me that there was more, still more he had yet to tell me about his family, his life before they'd been killed and this title had been thrust upon him. I wouldn't ask, not with the blight pressing down on him, not until he was ready. He'd given me space and respect I could offer him no less. Still, I couldn't bring myself to paint that day. Chapter 25. Chapter 25. All right. Another good read. So this is good. It was good. It was good. We're getting farther. We're getting farther and farther. I would say we're like 66% of the book. More? More tomorrow. More tomorrow. 